لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and continuing with the prophetic traditions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam in the 10 plus ahadith that we've narrated or discussed so far will be Fadlillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala and these various ahadith in general talked about the foundation of Islam Amma min bab al-ikhlas we talk about sincerity we talk about hadith Jibra'il alayhi salam the famous hadith of Jibra'il alayhi salam or the following hadith talking about the pillars of Islam bunyan islam wa ala khamsin and then from there we moved about to talk about the shubuha, doubts and desires that can occur. <coughs> These are all technical discussions that we find. And as we find that after these 12 ahadith or so, that you now know we begin to connect certain ahadith which begin to talk about practicality. The practical living <coughs> and application and implementation of an Islam. Because many of us we can sit there and read textual books and evidences about a qa'id, about belief, about the Qur'an, about theology, but yet we find that sometimes this does not develop into practical application. This is where many of us Muslims we fall short. And we contain a lot of technical academia and rhetoric. But when it comes to the everyday living of Islam, we find more and more many of us begin to slip away or fail to understand the impact of the Qur'an and the impact of the traditions of the Prophet because an Islam is about perfecting one's Iman or reaching a higher level of Iman and as the Prophet this hadith that we want to discuss today raises the level of Iman shows us what really Iman is that Iman isn't just the pillars of Iman that we study Arkham Sitta, the six pillars of Iman or the belief of Islam. Iman is far beyond that and deeper than that and a deeper penetration. That the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, And possibly many of us have memorized this hadith, or if not all of us are familiar with this hadith. And none of you truly believes until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. لا يؤمن أحدكم that person does not believe, does not have the right belief. And all of us, we are familiar with this hadith. What does this hadith entail or mean on a daily basis for many of us average Muslims? As I began with many of us, we read through the text of the Quran and the Sunnah, but we fail to find an application or that penetration. The first thing that we mention about this hadith is when certain words are used as like a hadith of a nafi, of negation, La yu'min, person does not believe. Because sometimes we find certain individuals begin to negate Islam. When certain hadith are mentioned in a strong context, it is not for us average individuals, as we mentioned time and time again, to read a hadith and begin to apply it upon another individual. If a hadith from Muslim says, Ayatul Munafiq Thalaf, or Thalafatun, the signs of a hypocrite are three, or Fi Ba'di Riwayat, we find four signs of a hypocrite. Because they shouldn't skim over the hadith and read it and then see a deficiency amongst their Muslim brother or sister and then say this is a sign of a munafiq. This person specifically is a hypocrite. لماذا? Why? Because I read this hadith and the hadith states the following and this person fell short. This is the biggest downfall we have amongst many of us Muslims at the moment, khasatan fil khalq in the West. The only thing that we look for is downfalls of an individual. And to pick on those downfalls, to exploit those downfalls of an individual. 
Fuqaha mentioned that even when you see a person who may look like in a state of drunkenness, even when you smell their mouth, still you should question your own self before becoming judgmental. And this happens to be the public domain, then a person can make a judgment or make a statement about that individual. But in a state of privacy, a person should always be seeking excuses for them, for that individual. And when a person even meets such individual, you find the sir, a hidden concept a person should be making dua, supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That praise you are, glory be to you, you protected me from not falling into such ma'asi, such disobedience, such fisk wa fujur, disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You protected me from this. That's how a person should be approaching individuals and visualizing on a daily basis, committing ma'asi, disobedience, and disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when the Prophet alayhi wa sallam mentioned, that yu'min, man la ya'lum jaru bawa'iqahu. That person just a belief, whose neighbors are free from the harm of that individual. The person just a belief. Many of us Muslims, we harm our neighbors. We oppress our neighbors, we root our neighbors. In kalu min al-kuffar, or min muslimin, happy to be from disbelieving individuals, Muslim individuals. Neighbors complain about us. Hadith states that person does not believe. That person is not a believer. Like by the hadith that we find, La salafa bi hadrati ba'am. There is no prayer if food is presented for the individual or the person has the call of nature. And here such a hadith should be once again placed inside the context. Because many of the average individuals, every time food is presented to them or they have a call of nature, they say, I will pray at a later stage. Khasat al salat al isha, the night prayer. That food is presented to me, so I'll delay the prayer, pray at a later stage. And this becomes habitual. Here you find the salat of the al-fa'am, the ma'na of excessive hunger, it begins to disturb your prayer. If it means two or three times in a week that you miss salat, salat al-isha bil jama'ati, you miss praying salat al-isha with the excuse that you're hungry or you need to eat, that's not a sign of a complete believer. It's a real occasion a person could have been traveling or a long day or the food is delayed, it's presented, a person may decide to then delay salat al-isha or not praying inside the masjid. Like what you find, لا يزني الزانعين يزني وهو مؤمن A person who commits zina, while that person is committing zina, he's still classified وهو مؤمن. That person is still a believer. But he's not a believer at that moment in time. As Abu Huraira mentioned, when a person commits this haram, this evil action, and he continues, وهو يشرب الخمر person drinks alcohol, or وهو يسرق person steals, that person is not a believer at that moment in time. That person is not a believer. What does it mean that person is not a believer? All these ahadith. Abu Huraira mentioned that at a moment in time, that person's iman is lifted, hovers over their head. When they complete that evil action, the iman comes back down inside their heart and their mind. <laughs> these ahadith la yu'min don't mean the person has become a disbeliever, a total disbeliever. No one should classify an average Muslim as a disbeliever when they commit sins. Because this has been babil ghulu. This is from extremity that we find. There are two signs of extremity that we find that destroy this Muslim Ummah. al ghulu fil ahkam To be excessive in rules and regulations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ghulu fil ashkhas And to praise certain personalities or certain individuals. Wa hatta min kana rasul alayhi salatu salam To excessively praise the Prophet alayhi salatu salam To praise his family members. These are two extremities that you find that still exist unfortunately in Muslim Ummah. Amma al ghulu fil ahkam to be excessive inside the rules and regulations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a person falls short, when a person doesn't carry out such ahadith, or fails in such ahadith, you find that people begin to state, or some people begin to state, this person fell short, for who are This person disbelieving in the middle, for them who This person's blood becomes halal. Hada ghulu fil ahkam. This is excessiveness, excessiveness or extremity in the rules and regulations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Min al awam for the average individual, is not allowed for any average individual to judge the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No average individual can come and pluck and say, this verse means this, this hadith means this, so I apply it upon such and such an individual. As they say, no person can take the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their own hand. Allah places certain individuals, places a mahkama, places a court, places a system, places hukam, places individuals who are placed inside that authority to implement the laws and places that sultan, places that amir, places the leader who begins to make them feel to implement these laws and regulations, not for the awam, not for the masses of average individual. And now the shaqs qad sariqa 
vinnig dat jy nou is pas in die stoel, so in our own sanctity, in our own environment, we chop off his hand, amputate his hand. This is the sharia of Allah, kan da'a kalla. This is not the sharia of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That your own vicinity, in your own locality, in your own proximity, you say you implemented laws of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is ghulu fil ahkam. Ghulu, extremity in the laws of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you find al-ghulu fil ashkhaf. To praise certain individuals. Ka'ula yad khubaka. Arawafida. Al-ghulatu shi'a. Al-ithna ashaya. These days are fast approaching from upon them. The days of Muharram that we find. These are individuals ghulu fil ashkhaf. Extremity that we find in certain personalities that we find. Hub, Ahlul Bayt, only love certain members of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam and begin to classify every single other companion, every other companion, rakizu lahada, every other companion except for the household of his members are all kuffar, are all disbelieving individuals, treacherous individuals, hypocritical individuals. They were concealing the path. This is their creed, Rasul Aqidatim, the essence of their creed. They no one doubt that. Don't let anyone that come and trick you about their, their, their beliefs. They are known as taqiyya, deception. For them it's allowed to lie to Ahlu Sunnah. They are allowed to lie to us and say, I don't believe in this. But you begin to pester them and ask them, what do you say about Abu Bakr? What do you say about Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma? Keep on questioning them. Eventually the truth comes out. That possibly they could have been Muslim. Or we accept there's some goodness in, amongst them. Say to them, are they believing in their religion? Did they believe? Are they classified as the true leaders after the Prophet alayhi And you find them begin to waver here and there. Because Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, their answer is clear. Their belief is clear about Khulafa al Rashidun. That's Imam Malik, as you mentioned, you wouldn't notice and recognize who are Ahlul Shia. Who are these individuals who begin to make Ghuluf al Ashkhas? Their people begin to defame the companions. Begin to defame. That's a clear symbol. Symbol of people, Ahlul Shia. Wa Rawafida, Wa Ithla Ashariya. All these groups and these sects that we find amongst these individuals. Wa Amma Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. They're those individuals who praise the companions. You hibbunahum jami'an. Praise all your companions. Make salah of them. Make madh of them. Praise them. Extol them. Remember them expressly or extensively throughout their lives. Remember these individuals and follow the footsteps of these individuals. So this is all ghuluf in ashkhas. Extremity that we find. All based upon ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that we find. And likewise we find that the real meaning is such ahadith, the person that reach iman can. The person who does not care about their neighbor. The person who does not care about their Muslim brother has not reached the pinnacle level of Iman. And the Iman mazal munaqis. This person's Iman is still deficient. They may have been encompassed or understood the pillars, the articles of faith. But as far as the Sharia is concerned, their Iman is still deficient. They haven't reached the true level of Iman. That's why in the other narration Muslim Imam Ahmad that we find, لا يبلغ عبد الحقيقة الإيمان حتى يحب للناس ما يحب للناس من الخير. In a Muslim Imam Ahmad that we find, that person not reached. The higher level of Iman. He doesn't understand the pinnacle level of Iman until he doesn't love for his brother the goodness what he loves for his own son. In other words, in the Sunnah of Imam Nasa'i that we find, حتى يحب لأخيه حتى يحب لأخيه من الخير ما يحب لنفسه ما يحب لأخيه من الخير He loves from the khayr, from the goodness. When a person likes goodness for their own self, he wants that for their own fellow brother. And here you find this hadith being more accurate. A person will like for another Muslim what they like for their own self. But it could be a general liking, liking. But this hadith meant it specifically, min al khayr. From the good things that you may want for your own self. That's why Ulama mentioned you give sadaqah. A person shouldn't give sadaqah which is possibly old clothes. That should be given to benefit people. A person should take opportunities inside their life to give their best clothing, to give new clothing. That's min al khayr, from the highest level of khayr of goodness. A person gives a new gift, a new clothing for individuals. And that which has been narrated or mentioned by Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala anha, that every time she gave sadaqah, she gave charity, she would perfume it. She would perfume it, bless it, a good smell, a good fragrance, and then present it. This is a lesson in itself for many of us individuals. Now it may be high goodness, we give away old clothing, old ornaments, old ornaments are given away, emptying out the house, which is good, it will still benefit those individuals. But maybe we should sometimes in our life give the best of our garments, or buy new clothing, new garments, or new food, or whatever may be given to these individuals, min al-khayr, and this hadith that mentions. Al-Iman, bid'un wa sab'una shu'ba. Iman is some 70 odd branches, as prophesied or mentioned by the Prophet alayhi salatu salam. Ba'anaha qawlu la ilaha illallah. The most highest level is a statement of La ilaha illallah. 
وأدناها the most lowest branch of Iman is Iman to Allah عن الطريق to take away harmful object away from the path this hadith that we find which is known as Shu'ab al-Iman the 70 odd branches of Iman Imam al-Bayhaqi in his famous Risala Shu'ab al-Iman collected these 70 plus 77 odd branches of Iman Imam al-Bayhaqi also wrote a famous book talking about the seal of the Prophet والسلام, entitled Dala'il al nubuwa eight volumes handwritten printed in four volumes printed version Dala'il al nubuwa talking about Mu'jizat al-Nabi and it becomes incumbent upon us Muslims to read about the life of the Prophet والسلام, read about his ajabi likewise Imam al-Asfahani also wrote a kitab called Dala'il al nubuwa evidences of the Prophet والسلام, Imam al-Suyuti talking about his seerah Dala'il al-Kubra al-Nubuwat al-Kubra Talking about the seerah of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam in two volumes that we find. Imam Qadi Iyad, his famous work, al Shafa fi ta'arif al-Mustafa. Talking about the Prophet alayhi salatu salam that we find. Rakhtifu la hadha fi hayatikum. Rakhtifu ala sunnati ala seeratihi. Read about the seerah of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam. Qara al-Ajaib. To read about his fadaib. Read about his dala'il nubuwa. Talk about his evidences of why he's classified as the Prophet. Because you find certain miracles in his etiquette towards al masakin wal du'afa, wal yatama, towards the destitute, the dumb trodden, the impoverished individuals, the weak individuals, the orphans. Read in Yisira, you see that about the Prophet <coughs> which gave him these mu'jizat, which entitled for him to be given these miracles to be given to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And likewise you find that we all want paradise. In a statement which is a hadith which is da'if, in the Muslim Imam Ahmad, that a meaning here can encourage us. Atuhibbu, atuhibbu jannah. Do you love paradise? You want paradise as opposed to one in the religion. Qultu na'am. Qala fahibba li akhika ma tuhibbu nafsik. You want paradise for yourself? First he said, yes I do. Then love for your brother, will you love for yourself? When can a hadith da'ifan? Even a hadith is da'if in its narration, but the meaning is crystal clear. The understanding is right there. All of us that we want paradise, if you want paradise, then love for your brother what you love for yourself. And thus you find many ulama explaining the first hadith that we began. لا يؤمن أحدكم Now you truly believe entails عموم الإخوة entails any form of brotherhood. Ulama have mentioned وحتى إن كانوا من القفار Even if there happens to be a disbelieving individual, you want khayr, you want goodness for a disbelieving individual. It's not to be restricted. You want goodness only for Muslims. You want goodness for جميع الناس. You want goodness for all of mankind. Ya you and us, O mankind, as the Quran mentions us with the Arab, inni Rasulullah ilaykum jami'an. Talking about our circle, Nabi alayhi salatu salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions on his verses as with the Arab, he never said, O oh, believers, he never said, O oh, Muslims. He never said that. He said, Ya you and us. He said, O oh, mankind, indeed I am a messenger to all of you. That is the Prophet alayhi salatu salam. Wa ma arsalnaka illa. Rahmatan lil alameen. You know, send you the mercy to all of the worlds. There's no distinction that a person thinks that the message is only for a Muslim, or only for certain individuals, or only for us to apply. That's when you read through the seerah of the Prophet, alayhi salatu salam, in other famous two volumes, Risala al Dutura, that we find, if not mistaken, Hakuk al Nabi, ala ummatihi fi dawti kitabi wa sunnah, talking about the rights of the Prophet, alayhi salatu salam upon this Muslim Ummah based upon the Quran and the Sunnah emphasizes inside these two volumes talking about the main theme what is the main theme of the Prophet alayhi salatu that many of us have forgotten da'wat al the calling of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because many of us we become very relaxed in this environment living in a western environment what is that goal? what is that purpose? what is that intent? let alone being inside this environment being upon this earth what was the main focus of the life of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam? was always given da'wah ila tawheed and as you find that some ulama mentioned it is a slightly, maybe possibly a harsh statement we just mention it not to scare or to harm non-Muslims that we find some ulama mentioned not to even sit with them and when you do sit with them to have food or drink or to pass some time with them what is the inner motive within yourself? the inner motive within yourself and your mind is to give da'wah to them how many of us is that it become an inner motive? Yes, we work and we operate, we do various things with them that are needed. But we need to retune our mind, our belief and our intent of being in this environment. Any opportunity that we have, it should be given them da'wah. 
remind them about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thus we find that this da'wah or kindness and goodness is given to Muslim and non-Muslims, it makes no distinction. Because the most important kindness for the non-Muslim is this individual, he can get khul fi Islam. That this person enters into Islam. And there's a strange point, the person who narrated this hadith, Abu Hamza that we find, Anas ibn Nani. Look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed certain individuals to narrate certain hadith. That's what we classified it as a science in itself. Just like you find Asbab al Nuzul. You find Asbab al Nuzul in the Quran, a certain verse is sent down for a certain reason. You find Asbab al Wurud. You find certain reasons why certain ahadith are mentioned, or why certain narrators or certain companions mention certain words in hadith. Anas ibn Malik, just to help us to understand the context of this hadith and who this individual was. Anas ibn Malik, you find his father, you find Malik, Tana Kafir was a disbelieving individual. When he heard about the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, for Hajra, he left Mecca, he left the environment, and he traveled to the land of Sham. For Mata Kafir. For Abghad al-Rasul, he hated the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, he hated him. He hated him so much, he left the environment and made this hijra. His wife bought Anas, bought her son, and presented it in front of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, and said, I want my son to serve you. Pay attention to this. His father died as a kafir, disbelieving individual, hated the Prophet ﷺ, hated him, and left. And his son now is presented by the mother and said that I want this boy of mine, Anas, to serve you. And that's what brings to mind the famous hadith, Khadamtun Nabiya alayhi salatu salam ashra sinin. Anas ibn Malik served the Prophet ﷺ for 10 years. Not for 10 minutes, not for 10 days. He said, look, he served him for 10 years. Served him for 10 years and the Prophet والسلام, never once said to him, why do you do this? Why do you do it like this? If only you done it like this, if you done it like this. Ashra sini, 10 years, the Prophet والسلام, never rebuked him. Never rebuked him. In the hadith of the dunya, these are the phase of the dunya, nas. These people are on the phase of the dunya, makes no difference. A minute here, a day there, a month there, a time there, makes no difference in your affairs. That's what the Prophet was. And that's when his mother said, I want him to serve you. He carried on serving the Prophet And he became the close comrade, many generations bringing the water to the Prophet What is the reward of goodness but nothing but goodness? The Prophet looks at the future. He's been given the future. He's been given a deep understanding. That claim his father is a disbelieving in the vision. But look what's happened. His own son comes. And from his loins and his lineage that we find, what a blessed individual that we find. That's the Prophet ﷺ mentioned by this individual. فَتَقَبَّلَهُ النَّبِي عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَامُ وَرَبَّاهُ He kissed him. And he nurtured him. He brought him up. And he said, Allah مَكْثِرْ مَالَهُ وَوَلَدَهُ وَبَارِكَهُ فِي مَا عَقْلِكَهُ وَعَنْ حَدِيثِ فِي مَرَاهُ الْبُخَارِ وَمُسْلِمِ inside the Sahih. And then he prayed for him. Bless him in his way in his children, whatever you've given him. This is Anas ibn Malik. This is his father who rejects faith, who goes away from faith. The Prophet doesn't rebuke his son and say, your father was a kafir, your father hated me, your father was like this towards me, your father done this towards me. No, kill them. He never responded in that manner. He responded in the opposite. Showed the love, showed the affection, which strengthened the iman of Anas ibn Malik. And that's you find, man ahabba, and you zahzahal alinnaab who wants to be rescued from the hellfire wa yadkhul al-jannah fal ta'ti maniyyatuhu wa huwa yu'min billahi wa yawm al-akhir whoever wants to be rescued from the hellfire and be saved from the punch of the last day let that individual come or let death come upon that individual and a person that has belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the hadith that it continues wa liya'ti ila al-nasi ma yihibbu an yu'ta ilayhi come to people just like you expect people to come to you hadith inside muslim that we find sahih muslim that the way that you approach people, or you want people to approach you, it should be the way that you approach them. You love that people speak to you with kindness, with goodness, with humbleness, with nice words, with good character, good behavior. Then come in that manner to the people, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring the people in response back to you. That's how tab'a to shaks, that's how every human being likes certain things inside their life. So first you expect that, do that in their own life, and then people return that goodness to that individual themselves. And likewise you find Imam Shaykh al fawzani mentioned, and yakra al-Muslim yakra al-Muslim. Person dislikes 
whatever they dislike for themselves, they dislike in it for another Muslim. Just like you don't like anything to harm you, you don't like anything bad to come across you, you should equally have that same feeling towards another Muslim. So not just the goodness, you don't want any troubles to befall you, you don't want any hardship to come upon you, or any evil, there is no shark, but longer than that we find, because a shark is not to be attributed, even in the attribute to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but any obstacles, any difficulties, you don't want them to befall you. Why do you want it to, to befall upon another Muslim, another individual? Shaykh Qaymin rahmatullahi mentions, was shaks, mata lam yuhibbu yaqin ma yuhibbu nafsi, kana hasudan. If you don't love for another Muslim what you love for your own son, you're a jealous individual. Rakhizullah adi karima, he says you're a jealous individual, because if you don't want another non-Muslim to enter into Islam, you don't want another Muslim to have goodness, to have khayr, then you're jealous. Obviously we know that jealousy are anwar. There's various types of jealousy that exist inside the Sharia that have been mentioned. Imam al Ghazali collected and mentioned some of them, and even as a side for Imam al Ghazali, doesn't mean that we're praying and accepting his works and his teachings that we find. But to be fair, in terms of Mibab and Tazkir that we find, there are certain many beautiful, beneficial things that he's collected about spirituality to help the, the Muslim individual to develop themselves. And even as a side for right, Imam al Ghazali, he gave up his views of Ashairah that we find in his final works talk about the, the creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'i, moved away from that. What people attribute to him in Wild Ali works at Ibana or other works that he wrote, he clarified what he stands, his views regarding Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'a. But any hand that we find, when he talks about Al-Hassad that we find, Al-Hassad yanqasimu ila thalathati aqsal. Jealousy can be divided into three broad categories that we find. An yatabanna zumanu ni'ma al ghayr wa wa'asula li nafsi. The person wants the other person to lose all of their blessings and the blessing is given to that individual. That's the ultimate level of jealousy that we find. That a person has another blessing, you want the person to lose that blessing, and you want all of that blessing to be given to you. The second type of jealousy that you find, you want that person to lose that blessing. You want that person to lose that blessing, that lose that blessing but you don't want it for your own self. You don't care who is given to you. You just want that person to lose that blessing. The third type of jealousy that you find, and yet tamanna zawalu ni'ma anil ghayr, walakin yaqraf ziyada. Person wants that person to lose that blessing, or a person to have that blessing, but no more further blessing is given to that individual. These are anwar al hasan These are types of hidden jealousy that some of us may have inside our lives. Inside our lives and inside our hearts. First of all, a blessing, you don't want that person to increase in any more blessings. Then nothing else should be given to that individual. And like what Ibn Taymiyyah mentioned, إِذَا كَرِ الْعَبْدِ مَا عَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ بِي عَلَى غَيْرٍ فَقَدْ حَسَدَهُ وَعِنْ لَمْ يَتَمَنَّ الزَّوَانِ if you don't want another individual to have a blessing, or you don't want an individual to lose their blessing, but you hold some element of jealousy, then this is jealousy. No Muslim should hold jealousy towards another individual. And as we find, especially in spreading of khayr and goodness, a person should be forthright and coming out in spreading the goodness towards other individuals. And as we find, that this type of not being good towards other Muslims that we find is an element of jealousy or not fully into understanding a hadith of the Prophet wasallam. Numerous ahadith that we find, nothing on mu'min. You find the parable of believers was other parable towards another Muslim is like one body. And I'm sure all of us, we've memorized this hadith that if one part of the body has a pain, the whole body feels that pain. What does that mean in tale today? It's quite visible today that Muslim Ummah is suffering just like many centuries ago it suffered. But we're suffering even more today that we find. But what do we find time and time again? When a suffering is highlighted, well, it doesn't concern me. It doesn't concern me. It's got nothing to do with me. This is probably their own situation, their own corruption in their belief, inside their innovation, or their own deviancy, or inside their own life. This all could be possibly true. This could all be reasons for the downfall of that segment of the Muslim Ummah. There's no doubt. But what is the response? Because these prophetic ahadith are for time. They never entailed or said that if a certain type of Muslim fall short, then you should help them. If certain Muslims who associate themselves with you, you should help them. If they follow your view in life, you should help them. The ahadith are generic in nature. A Muslim, akhul Muslim. A Muslim is a brother to another Muslim. La yadlimuhu, wa la yakhbinuhu, wa la yakhbunuhu. Person is, doesn't oppress him, doesn't betray him, doesn't go against him. All generic ahadith. That's even in the Quran it talks about this Muslim ummah. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةٌ 
indeed Muslim brothers are believers, brethren to one another. Listen, classify that you are only a Muslim because this Muslim play prays inside your masjid, or follows your imam, or follows your shaykh, or follows your madhab. That's not the context of the Quranic generic nature about Muslim ummah. And it never classifies it in that manner. It openly discusses that we as Muslims take care of other Muslims. And as you find that the, the global hate to use that expression, the onslaught on the Muslims that we find, as many ulama have collected and said, that when a Muslim is being, may Allah forbid, being slaughtered or being tortured or being oppressed, no kafir stops there and says, and asks you, Hal anta ala madhab fulan? Are you Hanafiyan or Shafi'iyan or kada wa kada? This is non Muslim stop and say to that individual, Are you this type of Muslim? Do you follow this madhab? Is this your shaykh? Is this your imam? Is this your masjid? Kalla. Have you ever heard that in history? That any non Muslim stop before executing another Muslim or harming another Muslim, ask them and make a differentiation and then let one go free and punish another individual? Yes, they do know that certain types of individual Muslims would be ferocious, would be victorious will be shown in the Iman, will be shown in the devotion. مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ رِجَالٌ صَدَقُوا مَا أَهَدُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ قَضَى نَحْبَهُ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَمْتَضِقُ وَمَا بَدَّلُوا تَبْدِيلًا There are certain men that they know who they are because the Quran describes them. مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ رِجَالٌ From amongst the believers of certain men, they have remained true to the covenant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That whatever happens inside their life, they're going to be devoted. That's why these individuals, they know who these individuals are. They want to target these individuals. Because they made a promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Either Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take their life in this dunya, or they'll be given the opportunity to carry on what they're doing. The key element that the ayah ends by mentioning, وَمَا بَدَّلُوا تَبْدِيلًا These individuals, no matter what happens inside their life, their intentions never change. Their life never changes. Whatever scenario, whatever situation, whatever place, wherever you place them, they remain focused inside their life. And thus you find that they will begin to target these certain individuals. Because you know what this, this famous saying, it only takes a few good men to change society. So they'll target a few good men, who these individuals are, and bring them down one by one. The sad factor is, we as Muslims begin to target these individuals one by one. That's the sad factor that hurts me inside my heart. Amma al-Kufa, ma ahtam bihim. Yawmiyyan, laylan wa nahara, day and night, they can plot a plan. Doesn't bother me one bit. Never has bothered me inside my life. Wa amma min al-Muslimin, min ikhwanina, from our brothers who begin to plot a plan against other Muslims or begin to derail other Muslims, look down upon other Muslims and begin to bring them down. They need to think deeply about the Imam. Think deeply about their life, about what do they really believe in. لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب اليقين ما يحب لنفسه Now you truly believe and then he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. وقول قول هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولجميع المسلمين فاستغفروا إن هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد. As you mentioned, the generic hadith talk about the Muslim Umma that we find on generic verses of the Quran. ورب يعتصم بحبل الله جميعا ولا تفرقوا. Read the tafsir of these ayat. It's a tafsir of Kathir. You begin to understand the development of the Muslim Umma of seeking an element of unity and kindness and goodness. And like what Sheikh Uthaymin Rahmatullah mentioned, it is incumbent upon this Muslim Ummah to be one hand, to be one force, to be one form of unity that we find is what all these verses inside the Quran and prophetic traditions are telling us to do. And as we find we begin to unify and strengthen ourselves, when the Quran describes that your wing or your strength is taken away from you and the weakness begins to develop inside this Muslim Ummah that we find. And like what we mentioned, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةٌ Indeed, believers are brethren towards one another. And likewise the Quran mentions will uthiruna ala anfusihim walau kana bihim khasasa wa man yuqan shuhha nafsihi fa ulaika humul muflihoon They begin to spend and give even though they have a dire need for their own selves. They give even though they need that wealth. They need that property themselves. They need that wealth themselves. They give it. And whoever removes the covetous, the greed out of their hearts fa ulaika humul muflihoon Then indeed those are the successful individuals. And that's why we Read the tafsir of these ayat that those are successful individuals or they spend even have a dire need amongst, it, amongst their own selves. In the tafsir of these ayat that we find, 
We find that once an individual came to the Prophet والسلام, in a state of dire hunger and he asked him for some food and the Prophet والسلام, as his general practice or his general home didn't have much food that's why we find Aisha narrates that days, months would go by that we'd hardly eat any meals that we eat the two black substances just date and water that's the household of the Prophet والسلام, focus upon this that the Prophet والسلام, months would go by there will hardly be a proper meal be given to them. So he said, who will, who will be, take this young, or take this man, and take them as their guest, and take care of this individual. فَقَوْمْ رَجُلْ مِنَ الْأَنصَارِ A person from the Ansar, he stood up. And he said, I will take this guest of the Prophet ﷺ. So he came back home, and he said to his wife, prepare for this guest of ours. He's not our guest. فَإِنَّهُ ضَيْفْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ So he is not our guest. He's the guest by default of the Prophet ﷺ. So prepare the meal for this individual. She said to him, Ya you are right. She said, Oh man, there's nothing inside the house. There's nothing inside the house except for a small amount of food for the awlad, you know. A small amount of food for our children. He said, put out the lights and begin to stir the pot. And tell the children that the food is being prepared until they eventually they fall asleep. And then present the small food that we have, present it to the guests of the Prophet ﷺ. So they done this. Focus upon this hadith, this scenario. Presented this. In the morning, you find the Prophet ﷺ knows what's taking place. فَقَالَ لَهُ عَجِبَ اللَّهِ أَوْ ضَحِكَ اللَّهِ Allah SWT was startled, marveled, praising. Oh, he smiled, he laughed. And this is كَمَا يَلِيكُ الْجِلَالِ بِجَلَالِ سُبْحَانَ وَتَعَالَى These sifat are befitting the majesty of how they are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has seen does see and knows what these individuals have done that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising these individuals He knows what you've done and as you find that such verses are made reveal about such individuals under Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ They give even though they have a dire in their own self This is what Islam is This is what being a Muslim is and the person gives them a dying need himself. Who knows that? Only Allah. Only Allah knows that we should develop that inside our life. A moment, even once, mother of the once inside our life, that you only have that small amount of savings, or that small amount of wealth. No one knows about it. But you give it away, Lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. For what reason? To save yourself from the punishment of the hellfire. Save yourself, protect yourself from the nerve, wala mushifti tamar. Even be half a date. Even half a day shields you. A sadaqa to burhan. Sadaqa is an evidence for you. Sadaqa is a shield, is a protection. Hatta fil qabr that you find a person going inside the grave, punishment will be coming for the individual. Sadaqa will come and become a veil, become a barrier for that individual. Protect the individual from the punishment. Sadaqa will come on the day of judgment, multiplied many times over. Mountains of good. All of us, we are Bashar, we would like to multiply our wealth inside this dunya. But the multiplication inside the Akhirah Ad'afu kathira Isn't just once Isn't just ten times Isn't hundred times It's many times manifold With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We multiply that for that individual <coughs> These are all encouragements for us To do what? To benefit our own self لَن تَنَالُ بِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُ مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ That's why even a person narrates this hadith وَمَنْ يُوْخَ شُحَ نَفْسِينِ He's talking about Many of the mentioned hadith narrated by Abu Talha and Abu Talha this ayat وَلَمْ تَنَالُوا بِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُونَ You're never going to attain piety if you don't spend what you love Read that Tafsir with the Kathir once again about Abu Talha He had a garden that everybody in Medina knew about his garden The orchards, the vineyards, the plush fruits, the date palm trees, everything, everyone knew about it وَحَتَّى الرَّسُولُ Read inside the hadith inside Sahih Muslim, not mistaken, inside the Fadail of Abu Talha that we find inside Bukhari as well, Munaqib, talking about Abu Talha, talking about him even the Prophet ﷺ would drink from the fresh water would drink from the fresh stream everyone knew about this, these gardens when he heard these ayat لَن تَنَالُوا بِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ you're never going to attain piety until you don't spend on the things that you love what did he want to do? he wanted to give the whole of the garden away all of it away, the Prophet ﷺ just removes it you leave behind something to benefit your family members so they don't need to beg or ask people that should be enough to leave behind but the rest, the whole of his garden, rest of everything just give it away, and he gave it away because he wants to attain 
piety. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq and ability to have a concern of this Muslim ummah. Not just on a basis of academia and the rhetoric that we read, the te- theological discussion that we have when we study, but begin to develop that inside of life to take care of this Muslim ummah first and foremost towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Encourage people to come to the life of the Sunnah of the Prophet And then begin to have charitable actions and works that we find, as many of the ulama mentioned, one of the best ways of giving da'wah is charity, of kindness and goodness they find towards non-Muslims. Hatta you find proof about this eight categories of people eligible to give zakah to, whereby it mentions that those people to bring their hearts close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ulama have debated about this. Who are those individuals to bring the hearts close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Two views exist amongst ulama of the One is those Muslims who may not be the best of Muslims to strengthen their hearts. And the other view which exists and is acceptable to this day is disbelieving individuals. You can give zakat to kuffar, to disbelieving individuals, to bring them, encourage them to come into Islam. Discussion takes place inside the eight categories of eligible people of zakat inside Surah Tawbah, verse number 60 if I'm not mistaken. Even disbelieving individuals are receivable or recipients of a zakat to encourage them to enter into Islam. If this is a zakat, then think about a sadaqah, to give gifts, to do things for non-Muslims, to encourage them. Tahadu, tahabu. Give gifts, it creates love between one another. Gifting the Quran, gifting the Sunnah, gifting fine character, good behavior, etiquette that we find is all the way of a Muslim to bring these individuals close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah wa malaikatu salluna ala nabi ya ayu al-lazina amin salli wa alayhi salli wa taslima Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim anna ka hamidu majid Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Iqra' kitab Allah tarqa jinanahu wa tana al-azim al-ajri wal-ghufrani